Welcome to Shadow PV. In this video, we will talk about the Victrum energy storage system. We will talk about retrofitting energy storage to an existing photovoltaic solution. We will talk about the words AC, DC, inverter, charger, and so on. What means energy storage system? It means then we have energy export grid feed in. The system will charge our battery instead of, and also instead of energy import, it tries to discharge the battery until it's on low state of charge. So we would reduce feed in and energy import to reduce the cost. And also we can emergency power supply functionality add to our existing systems or to our new system. First of all, I will show you the different units that are important uh, for the system. Um, one essential thing is the energy meter. The energy meter is instead installed directly after the main meter. And so it captures the overall energy consumption or feed in. So it detects whether we import or export energy at the moment. And so it controls the rest of the system. An additional essential thing of the system is the Victron Multi Plus 2. Um, it has multiple functions. One case it can change the battery from the 230 volt to the 848 volt so it can charge the battery also it can go the other way around it can discharge the battery from 48 volt to 230 volt also it brings the functionality for the emergency power supply it can make a uh, grid for us also when the public grid is not available but an important thing is that it does not have any photovoltaic connection. So we have other alternatives that I will show you next. The DC solution is named MPPT from the Victron product line. It connects on the one side to the PV modules and on the other side it's connected to the battery. So it's a DC DC charger. Its only function is to transform the higher voltage of the PV modules to the voltage of the 48 volt for example batteries. The only thing this can this thing can do is charging the batteries. Nothing else. Another solution, the AC inverter, is also connected to the PV modules, but it's not connected to the battery, it's connected to the grid. This thing can only transform the DC voltage from the PV modules to AC voltage and nothing else. The main thing for the energy storage system is the battery. In the Victrum economy system, it's often that they have 48 volt. It's every time DC. Uh, if you have any kind of battery, it's always DC. Um, usual or very often these pylon tech ones get used, but it's also possible to build your own batteries on the do-it-yourself way. Um, there are many videos on YouTube where you can see they have these uh, blue cells directly from China. Then you have to add a battery management system and so on. But that's a topic for a different video. Um, but this, we only look at the battery as it's shown here. Um, the Pylon Tech ones are extendable. You can start with low capacity and add additional modules as much as you want. And to, so you can extend your system. 
the Servo GX is the control center of the system. It has multiple inputs, so you can connect the battery, MPPTs, MultiPlus, energy meter, your local network, or by Wi-Fi, as you like. And it's only also the interface to the VRM portal. So when you ever see the VRM portal, and you can see it in many videos from other users or from me also, the data always gets shipped by the Servo GX, or it can be replaced by a Raspberry Pi. Um, the software that runs on the Servo GX is called Venus OS, and this is open source from Victron. It's a very good thing. And so you can run it also on the Raspberry Pi, but it's a do-it-yourself solution and it needs some knowledge how to connect the different modules. It's not out of the box as with the Servo GX. So after a short introduction to the different parts of the system, I'll show you the difference what AC coupling and DC coupling means. AC coupling on the left side, you can see the public grid you see the AC power meter, that's the EM24, as I show you before. And at the AC coupling, you can find a PV inverter, um, often attached here to the public grid side of the MultiPlus. Here is the AC in port. And you have a battery that is charged from the AC grid. And you can here use the no brake loads, the emergency energy port. On the other side, you can see the normal loads that also can be provided by energy from the battery. So you don't need to import energy as long as there's enough state of charge in the battery. And but when the grid side fails, the public grid side fails, only the no brakes load will keep on running. And an important thing is when the public grid is not available, also the PV inverter stops working. The other solution is DC coupling. And when you look at the DC coupling, the PV array is attached by the MPPT directly to the battery. And you also have no brake loads and normal loads. So when the public grid fails, the normal load side is not working anymore, but no brake loads continue and the MPPT can charge the battery. And so the no brake load will continue to work for a longer time period, as long as there's some sun. And also when the battery is completely discharged, the multiples will shut down, but the MPPT is able to charge the battery again. And when the battery has enough uh, state of charge, the multiples can start working again. This procedure is called the black start. With AC coupling, as told before, it's possible to use an existing PV inverter in an existing, existing installation. But as I told you, you have some disadvantages when it comes to public grid fail. And you also have multiple transformations. The PV array gives you DC current. The inverter has to transform to AC current and the MultiPlus has to transform back to DC current. Uh, an important thing is that the ma maximum charging power has to be regarded. Um, often there is only one MultiPlus 2 3000 used, and it can only charge up to 35 ampere. This means only 1.7 kilowatt can be charged into the battery. And that's not very much. 
So I showed you an example here from the VRM portal. You have an PV inverter with 3.3 kilowatt and you have some load, um, but only 1.7 kilowatt can be charged to the battery from the PV inverter side and you have some feed in also if uh, the battery can be charged some more. You have to pay attention. Um, often the solution would be a multi plus two 5000 can be used. It has uh, 70 amps of charging current, which is twice as much as the 3000 have. But uh, especially in Germany, I don't know the regulation in other countries, on one phase only 4600 VA are allowed. So if you want to use the 5000 version of the MultiPlus, you have to use it, uh, you have to use three units of it in a three-phase system. These are the German regulations. Perhaps in other countries there are other regulations and it's no problem, but in Germany we have this. Let's come back to the DC coupling, as shown before. From the MPPT side, DC to DC charging with higher efficiency, no transformation twice has to be done. Um, is often a better a solution for fast charging the battery with lower costs because you don't need the inverter and more multiplus units. Um, but sometimes it's a problem with the discharge power of the multiplus. So I also have here an example. <coughs> um, here uh, is a situation with only weak sunlight. So the PV inverter AC coupled here brings only 730 watt. And you have here the PV charger, the MPPT with 265 watts. So only one kilowatt is generated by the sun and the rest have to come from the battery. So we have loads from 4,800 watt here. And from the grid, there is imported 1,600 watt. That's because the multiplus has only limited discharge power. So only in some from the battery 2,600 and the PV charger 260 watts and some around 200-800 watt. Um, it depends on the temperature and so on. Um, this is a multi plus 2-3000. So only up to 3000 VA can be transformed to AC. And also if the battery is able to give more power, the multi plus is here the limiting unit. And so you have grid import because the multi plus cannot transform anymore. So what about the mixed up version of this installation? I think it's a good solution. Um, you have three possibilities of bringing the solar energy to the system. You have here the multiplus as shown before and the battery. Um, here is DC charging with the MPPT, DC to DC charging. You can fast charge the battery not, no matter how much power from AC to DC the multiplus can bring. On the other side there are two possibilities where you can feed in with PV inverters. You can feed in here in your local net on the AC inside from the MultiPlus. That's the most uh, normal way. 
And uh, the other possibility is to feed in on the critical load side. This is very nice because this works also when the public grid fails, but there is a disadvantage. You can own, you have to regard the factor of one rule, how it's called by Victron. And the factor of one rule says that you only have, can have so much power as the multiplus has power rating. This means if you have one multiplus 3000, you can have here maximum 3000 watt of three PV inverter. Often when you have three multiples in a three phase installation, for example, three 3000 units, then you can have 9000 watt on the PV inverter side on the critical load side. But if you have a bigger one, you have to connect it here so that the multiples doesn't go blow up. Um, here in the example from the VRM portal, you can see such an installation. You have the PV inverter with 1400 watt and, and part of it will get used immediately by the AC loads and the multiplus can charge the battery with also 1400 watt and the PV charger feeds in directly to the battery. Another question that is frequently asked is um, when the phases don't get used in the same power. So here is an example. When you have one multiplus on phase one, you can see here phase one gets feed in with 2500 watt and phase two uses power on 2600 watt and L3 has some weak feed in with 100 watt. Um, this is no problem in Germany. I don't know how it is in other countries because um, the energy meter we have is cumulative. So the sum of all three phases gets summed up. And as long as the sum is zero or nearly zero, you don't pay for the energy. This means you can work with one multiplus and one phase for some power and you don't have energy import and no export. This can be a nice solution if you don't want to spend a lot of money for three multiplus. Um, perhaps in other countries they have no cumulative energy meters, then the situation is another and you have to be aware of this. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, it's very, very important for me, please, and ring the bell so you don't miss my next videos. I hope this was very interesting for you and hope to see you soon. Goodbye, Helmut.